Hello and welcome back. Today we are looking at error proofing in the assembly. So it's a pleasure for, for me to have you here uh, today. My name is Adrian Auger and I'm a technical sales manager with the international team uh, at Mounts. So this is our first session, uh, third session today, should I say, and we are reviewing once again, error proofing in the assembly. And today we are focusing on the EC and ECT series, which are current control and transducerized tools. So we are taking a view on how to set the tools and how they can answer today's requirements from assembly lines. This morning, we talked about error proofing, we reviewed tightening strategies, so angle control, torque monitoring, torque control, angle monitoring. We also saw the fact that we can program the tolerance with the tool, making sure that we have not only tolerance in torque, but also angle windows to ensure that the torque is achieved in the right angle. We also discussed about the possibility to assign job and model functions to the tool, creating in that sense, some process control within the tool directly. We talked about screw counting and the digital IO as well. In um, a bit further, we also discussed about the functions and capabilities of the tool, uh, the ports, Many navigation, this is something that we saw just earlier on with the different menus and how to access to the menus directly from the controller touchscreen. We had a few words as well on the software. So once again, the software, a PC software comes with the tool uh, included so that not only the tool can be programmed from its own touchscreen, but it uh, can also be programmed from a laptop. And so the session right now, we are going to go a step deeper into the programmation and the programming, I, I would say, of the tool. So the last session, we talked about presets, how to set target torque, and what are the different uh, levels of programming within the presets. And right now, we will see what can be built around those presets to really bring something to another level to the customers. So it includes uh, advanced settings, it will include models, and it will also include barcode scanner. So let's jump right away to the screen of the tool. So this is the touch screen of the controller where as we've seen this morning, we can navigate between the different presets directly here, as well as enter the menu for the programming. So we already saw remote setting and monitoring submenus in the previous session. So right now we are going to focus on the parameter menu. So going to parameter, we have different sub um, menus. We have fastening, we have advanced, we have screw count, IO, controller network, multi-sequence, and model. So as a reminder, fastening is where we are going to have our different presets from one to 15. So that's where we can really program the main body of the fastening tell the tool what is the, what is the target torque, what is the torque tolerance, angle window, etc. So all the main body of the fastening is being programmed here. But then we can also build around those presets and this can start with the advanced menu. And the advanced menu will be divided in four different categories. So first is a free reverse rotation. So a free reverse rotation will basically 
make the tool turn counterclockwise for the angle set in this um, feature here. And the idea is to allow the screw to properly catch the thread, properly be in proper position before turning clockwise and before the fastening starts. It's a bit like um, turning the cap on a bottle counterclockwise before turning it clockwise to close the bottle. Then we have the thread tapping feature. Basically, this thread tapping feature is going to use for prevailing torque, is going to, you, to be used for applications where the torque needed to cut the thread is higher than the target torque. So here we can set a min and max torque window anyway, so that the torque is controlled during that step. We can assign also a specific speed um, to ensure that the part is preserved during that step. And then at the end, we will detect the torque uh, at the end of this thread cutting step and then go on with the rest, the remaining of the fastening. The, the two other features in the advanced menu are engaging torque detection. So this one is actually for threaded holes where with this feature, we will detect the friction of the screw on the thread. And this will allow us to have a repetitive point from which the angle will be measured for our angle window for uh, error proofing the fastening. We all know that sometimes operators put the screws by hand on the application. So each operator will insert and turn the screw differently. Some of them will be three turns, some of them will be one turn. So this will basically eliminate this and allow the tool to start monitoring the angle from the same point, fastening after fastening, whoever the operator is. And finally, angle after torque up is as its name, as its name states, a step of adding clockwise or counterclockwise after the target torque is reached. So these advanced functions are available in the number of 15, so one to 15. And as you could guess, each one of them is linked to the same preset number meaning that the advanced function one is going to be linked to the preset one, advanced function two will be linked to the preset two, all the way up to 15. So we can really once more build individual fastening strategies for each different preset and up to 15 different strategies. At this stage, I would mention that if you have questions, feel free to write them in the chat. We will review them at the end of the session and we will, of course, answer your questions. So the next menu in the parameter function is the screw counting. So this is something that will be um, valid for all the presets. So it's a global screw counting and we can start it in different ways. We can start the screw counting automatically. We can start it through signals being sent to the 25 pin input output. We can set a time limit so that the operator has to reach the, that specific number of screws within that time limit. And of course, we set here the total number of screw, which is displayed on the main screen so that the operators know 
how many screws they have to fasten totally and how many screws are remaining so that the cycle is complete. The IO here will allow you to assign the input and output exactly the way you want. So on the in input here, the three first pin are dedicated for preset selection in binary, binary code. If you want to change any input, just press on it and then you will have all your different available signals that will be there available for you to choose. So we can um, lock the tool. And in that case, if a signal is sent on pin one, the tool will be locked, not possible to work. So I will put it back to preset one here. Same goes for the output. In that case, on pin two, as an example, we have fastening okay, declaring that the torque was reached within the tolerance and within the angle window. If you want that to be a different signal, just click on it. And again, you can choose from any, uh, any available option here. Controller functions settings is going to be once more a global setting for all the tool. So here we have the driver ID. We've seen that the controllers can be um, integrated into a network through the RS-232 or Ethernet port. So this driver ID will be useful in case of um, a workplace with several controllers. The customer will then be able to easily identify which controller is which by the ID number. Then we have the driver model of the tool that's connected right now to the controller. We can change the units here. So we'll work in Newton meters. When we select the unit, it restarts so that we have fresh new settings dedicated to this unit. We can reinitialize the controller parameter, change the password. Auto speed is um, for the tool to automatically set the speed by itself. So the speed can be set either by the controller or by the user. user. If we let the tool determine and set the speed by itself, it will set the most appropriate speed to reach the target torque uh, in reputable and accurate fashion. Also, it will make sure that the part is preserved and that the tool protects the part while still bringing as much productivity as possible to the assembly. Of course, we can disable it, which is the case here, and set the speed manually directly into the presets. Acceleration is how long is going to, how long is the tool going to take to reach the speed? Torque holding time, how long is the torque held at the end of the fastening? Use max torque for reverse. Do we want to give full power of the tool for loosening? The loosening speed here. Forward and reverse run time limit are settings that are here to protect the tool, making sure that if we reach 10 seconds of the tool turning either ways, it will stop and give us an error. It's to prevent from the tool to be in wrongly placed and be activated continuously. Fastening OK time signal. How long do we want to send a fastening OK signal on the output? Screw type here. This is an interesting one where we can, for each preset, 
set if we want to use it clockwise or counterclockwise. So it means that we can have all of our presets working clockwise and we can select just a few of them that will be working counterclockwise. Talk calibration here is going to be a calibration of the tool. So we've seen that in the presets, we can have torque compensation, which is for fine tuning the tool on this assembly. The torque calibration is going to be a global calibration um, setting that will impact the whole tool. Selection on panel here on and off. Uh, can we allow the selection of presets to be made on panel? We can lock the tool reverse or uh, clockwise. And here is the way we are going to use the RS-232. So by default, the RS-232 comes set on Modbus uh, communication protocol. But here, as we are going to use a barcode later on during the, uh, this session, I set it on barcode with the appropriate boot rate to communicate with the barcode scanner. Do we want to send the fastening data automatically on the output of or on? Where do we want to send it from? RS-232 or the Ethernet port and which communication protocol are we going to use? Um, Modbus or open protocol? And the last one, model is something I'm going to speak about in a minute. Same for the barcode. And then all these settings are related to crow foot additions where we can set the ratio efficiency so that we can have an accurate display of the torque on the final point of the fastening. Network obviously is where we are going to set the network um, settings. So which type of IP address we want to use, static or dynamic. If we choose static, we can change the IP address directly here to match what is needed. And before going to multi-sequence, we are going to have a look at models here. So we've seen that for the presets, we can set the target torque, angle, and all the settings that will make sure that the screw is properly fastened. The model is a feature that will allow those presets to work together and for the tool to combine them to have a process control feature. So basically what we do here is we have 20 different steps per model with 15 models available. And for each step, we can assign different type of data. So step one, as an example, we can have an input. So in that case, the tool the controller would require to receive an input on that specific pin to go to the next step. We can send output, we can have delay or wait for a barcode to be read to go to the next step. But what I've done here is very simple. I set step number one with preset number one and we are going to make it for three screws and as soon as those three screws are properly fastened, the controller will jump to step number two, where we are going to use preset three for three, th three screws as well. So let's go back here to the controller now, and let's enable those models. So model selection mode on. And now you can see that on the front, on the touch screen, we will be able to select the models. So of course, the models can be changed again 
directly from here. This feature can be locked and the models can also obviously be selected from the 25 pin IO. So what we see now in the model is we are using model number one, we are using preset one and it's step one of this model. We have three screws to make, um, three screws still remaining and the target torque is five meter meters. So I'm going to now make the faster links. Passing okay. So now two screws remaining out of three. Now we jumped to step two, which is going to use preset three. Model complete, okay. The signal is sent on the output as well. And now we can go back to the step one and start again the cycle. So it's, it's very easy to set as you can see, and it's going to really allow the operators to use the tool while still uh, having peace of mind, knowing that the proper torque is used at the right place for the right number of screws and that we can, at the end of the assembly line, be confident that the part was properly assembled. So going back to the controller screen view, we can now have a look at what are the multi sequence. So first I'm going to disable the models. and go now to multi-sequence. So the multi-sequence is a way to have some kind of automation program run on one trigger event. So it means that the operator will keep the trigger pulled and the tool will navigate through those different steps. So we have two multi-sequence, A and B, for each of them, we have 10 steps. We can also have some loops so that we can jump from step nine back to step two automatically and count at the same time as an example. But once again, here I've done something simple, which is in that case, an example of a fastening for soft joint application. So what we do here is we make a fastening with preset number one, wait for um, two seconds, loosen the screw for three turns, and then fasten uh, with preset number three. So it can be, again, a good example for soft joint applications where preset number one will be used to compress the parts. Then we will hold on, wait, a little bit, loosen the part, the screw, and then come back with the target torque for the final assembly to avoid relaxation. So let's go back to the main window now and select multi-sequence A. So I'm going to run through it again here. So you could see the different steps um, navigating and being scrolled through directly on the screen. And now um, we are done back to the first step of the multi-sequence and ready for a new fastening. Something I want to show you as well today is this part here. 
So auto customizing is something that I mentioned earlier on that we would have a look at right now. And it's basically a feature that will allow the tool to learn the assembly and then apply this teaching directly for the preset. So let's imagine that we just received the controller and we want to set preset number four. We can have here the settings. Let's take blank one. Preset number five, target torque is set in the preset, five newton meters, 151 RPM. But I want also the, the tool to have the possibility to turn as fast as possible while respecting the part to really um, cut down on the fastening time. So cut down on production time, but also make sure that the tool still works in a qualitative way and brings me everything I expect from it. So what we do here, we select preset number five, the type of joint we have to deal with, whether it's soft or hard. If it's medium, we would select both. So here on the screw plate that I have is going to be a hard joint. So I select hard here. And when I'm ready to launch it, I press on start, make the fastening. And you see that now the free speed of advice is 446 RPM for 603 degrees. And we can just apply those settings and then they are automatically populated in the preset so that now the tool for 603 degrees will run at 446 RPM ensuring the best tack time possible. This is possible for obviously, I stop now here. It is possible for obviously every preset in the tool and it's a very easy way to program the tool um, on the production line. Another thing we should have a look at today is going to be the barcode reader. So if we go to settings and barcode here, you will see that we have 30 different barcodes available. And what we can do with those barcodes is basically link them to a specific preset or a specific model. So what I have set here is the barcode sheet where I will select here which preset I want to be linked to the first barcode I'm going to read. So I will use preset six. I click on read, scan the barcode. And now every time I will read this barcode is going to call preset number six. If needed, I can group the number of digit that I read from the barcode reader so that it can only read the first uh, digits as an example for if only a group of digits remain the same during the process during different parts for lot identification as an example or I can read the whole barcode which is the case here. Let's set up the next one. I will use it for preset number 14. Enter. Click on read. And now this preset will be automatically selected every time I read this barcode here. So let's go back. I read preset six is going to pull up preset six from the controller. And if I read workstation 12 is going to pull out 
um, preset number 14 from the controller. So it's an easy way, once more, to bring flexibility, quality control uh, to the line, and also speed up the assembly and make sure that we keep traceability of everything that's happening on the line in the controller. The barcode values will be saved along with the fastening data. And that's something that we will see tomorrow when we present the software that is used for programming the controller. And you will see here the type of data that is collected and sent automatically on the RS232 and Ethernet ports that come with the tool. Of course, if you if you need, we are available for uh, privatized demonstration and training. So if you if you want to to have a session or discuss a specific application together, feel free to contact us and we will arrange that. In the meantime, um, I will now be ready to, to take some of your questions. So if you, if you want to write them in the chat, Tom will be able to read them out loud and we'll be able to, we'll be happy to answer your questions. Tom, do we Hi. have- Hi Adrian, Hi Adrian. Yeah, we've got a, one question here from Oliver. Um, question is, if an operator fails to complete one of the presets, will the unit lock and prevent them from moving on to the next step in the assembly process? Yes, that's a possibility. So going back to the controller screen here, I will simply show you what happens in case of an error. So what I've done with preset number one is, let's go back here. So preset number one, we have five Newton meter as a target torque, 10% tolerance, and we need to reach five Newton meters between 300 degrees and 1,080 degrees. So if I go ahead and try to fasten an already fastened screw, I have an error signal because the torque, five Newton meters, was reached before 300 RPM. And on the other way, if I reach 1,080 degrees, the tool stops by itself and send an error signal. From there, we can either have the tool locked until an unlock signal is sent on the, on the 25 pin or through the network or we can allow the tool, the controller, I would say the operator, to go on and move to the next fastening. It's, it's totally up to your process and how you want the tool to manage error signals. Any other question, Tom? No, that was just that question, Adrian. Okay, okay. Well, as you can see here, um, if you have other questions, feel free to send me an email here. You have my email address appearing on the screen. We'll be happy to answer you. Any question you have is very welcome. And our next session is going to be tomorrow. So tomorrow we will see how to use the software that comes with the tool and what are the advantages and benefits of using it. Um, this is at 9 a.m. GMT, which is UK time. So keep that in mind, depending on your time zone. And one hour and a half after this one, at 10.30 GMT, we will be reviewing our battery tools. So the battery transistorized tools, that is something brand new so that um, you will see how these tools can be used, how can they be programmed, how can they work as standalone tools, but also in combination with other tools. So that's going to be quite an interesting session as well. 
So I hope that you got the information you were looking for today. Thank you again very much for joining us. And I'm looking forward to see you again tomorrow. Thank you, everyone.